Hey everybody, Homeslice Henry here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a really fun theme team in the Sinnoh Cup. Today, we are featuring the Double Chomp theme team featuring Gabite and Garchomp. For the movesets, Gabite is running Mudshot, Twister, and Flamethrower, while Garchomp is running Dragon Tail, Sand Tomb, and Outrage. This theme team is definitely not one I would recommend running, as it took a lot of battles to get these wins, but I do hope you guys enjoy the matches. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's take a look at the Double Chomp theme team in action in the Sinnoh Cup. Picking up an incredible lead in the first match, Empoleon into Gliscor. The opponent safe swaps into a Fire Fang Hippowdon, so the opponent is definitely running some spice as well, but unfortunately this is still a commanding matchup for Empoleon. We're able to force the shield, and the waterfall does sneak through, so I am more than willing to commit the shield. They just go for a Weather Ball bait, but Empoleon is able to farm down, and now we have an energy lead for whatever they decide to bring in. My guess is we will see their third, we do, and it's Gastrodon. So the opponent is running a triple crown strategy. That is so cool. We safe switch into Gabite to hopefully bait back out Gliscor. We tank the body slam and back in comes Gliscor. We are running Mudshot on Gabite, which does charge the charge moves very quickly. We're able to land a flamethrower and we're able to get to a second. Twister is such a bad move that it's almost always better to go for flamethrower. We're able to force the shield. They should be just short of an earthquake here and I can survive a Night Slash. So we're gonna let this go. It is the Night Slash, Empoleon survives, and we're able to get off the Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon will be taking out the Gliscor. They bring back in Gastrodon, and we have Garchomp. These Dragon Tails are absolutely chunking. We just need to get to the Outrage, which we're able to do. Outrage is gonna be doing more than enough to take out the Gastrodon, and that is a good game. All right, hopping into the next match, leading Empoleon into Bastiodon, an incredible lead for us. The opponent safe switches into Driftblim, and honestly, I feel like I have to stay in here. I do have two ground types in the back, which should hopefully be able to handle Bastiodon, but Driftblim's Icy Winds hit for double super effective damage against both of my back Pokemon, so that's definitely going to be enough to one-shot them. So we are going to stay in with Empoleon. Unfortunately, we are probably going to need to double shield as Shadow Ball would be taking us out from this range. So I do commit the shield. I over farm as much as I dare. And now we're going for the Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon should be taking them out if they decide not to shield. They do shield and unfortunately they are able to get to a move and Shadow Ball will be taking out the Empoleon. I bring in Gabite to go for a very aggressive Mud Shot down. We leave with quite a bit of energy, and they have Frostlass in the back. Oh my goodness, this is perfect. We have Flamethrower. Flamethrower from Gabite does big damage on a Frostlass. The opponent switches in Bastiodon, and we bring in Garchomp. Here's where having Earth Power would definitely be nice, but with Sand Tomb, we're still hitting for double super effective damage. The Sand Tomb lands, and we're able to lower their defense. Bastidon is in a pretty tough spot for sure here, as all of their charge moves are going to be resisted, so we can tank whatever they throw. They go for the Stone Edge, we're farming up, and now we're going for Sand Tomb number two. This will be getting them very low. Are we able to farm down? We are not, but they're forced to burn energy, which works out great for us. We are going to bring back in Gabite. They bring in the Frostlass. Can we get the Twister? We're able to get to the Twister. Twister will be taking out the Frostlass. And then can we mud shot down the Bastiodon? Back in comes Bastiodon. Gabite able to farm down. And that is a good game. All right, hopping to the next match. We have Empoleon into Empoleon. In the mirror, I definitely want to stay in for quite a while because both of my back two Pokemon take very big neutral damage from Waterfall. So we are gonna farm up to about one and a half Hydro Cannons and then we're throwing our first charge move. We're able to land it, which is very nice. And now we're going for the second. This should hopefully be a CMP tie. I am gonna commit the shield just so I can force a shield from my opponent. And then if I want, I can hopefully try and snipe or catch with one of my back Pokemon and we're able to catch onto Gabite. This will do about half of our health, which is unfortunate, but should hopefully be able to bait out their best response, which it looks like is Gliscor. Gliscor actually throws the Night Slash. They're not wanting to get hit by a charge move, and that works out pretty well for me, as Empoleon does have a very nice matchup versus Gliscor. We are able to sneak through the Waterfall, which is very, very nice, so I'm willing to commit the shield to get all this extra Waterfall damage off. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to farm down, but I will be able to go for the Hydro Cannon, 
and they decide to let it go down. They still have their very low health Empoleon in the back, and their final Pokemon is Gallade, and this is looking very rough for us, as unfortunately Garchomp with no shield gets absolutely bodied here. The Confusions do half of our health, the Leaf Blade does the rest, Empoleon is not going to be able to farm down. So things were looking okay there for a minute, but unfortunately Gallade with shield advantage is incredibly deadly. Hopping to the next match, picking up the Nightmare lead, Empoleon into Cresselia. Unfortunately, Cresselia has winning matchups against my entire team, so it is definitely going to be a team effort to take it out. They land the Grass Knot, and they save switch into their own Empoleon, things going from bad to worse, as my backline doesn't particularly like to see Cresselia or Empoleon. And we're going for the second Hydro Cannon, trying to do as much damage as we can. We do get the shield and it's actually a CMP tie. Honestly, this is perfect. We're gonna let this go and go for a very aggressive farm down with Gabite. Come on, Gabite, mud shot down. Gabite is able to mud shot down. And now we have an energy lead and shield advantage in the Cresselia matchup. So hopefully Gabite will be able to do some solid damage. We land the first flamethrower. Gabite is able to get to a second flamethrower. Mudshot charging so quickly. And this will be putting Cresselia deep into the red. Cresselia goes for a move. I'm just going to let this go. We're just going to trust in Garchomp at this point. It's a Grass Knot. Simultaneous swap. And it's Bastiodon in the back. We can actually win this. Garchomp is just going to be going straight Sand Tomb in this matchup. And despite the horrible lead, we are able to get the win and a two shield flex. Good game. Picking up a very nice lead in the next match, Empoleon into Gliscor, and the opponent save switches into Trash Wormadam, so they are very, very weak to an Empoleon lead. We're gonna go for the Hydro Cannon, hoping for the shield, which we get, and now that we have shield advantage, we can officially counter swap into Gabite. Our end goal here, of course, is to try and land the Flamethrower. Unfortunately, we do get debuffed from Bug Buzz, and we're going for the Flamethrower. Do they know about the moveset? They do not, and we're able to absolutely cook Trash Wormadam. Back in comes Gliscor, but Gabite is not done. We're able to get to a second Flamethrower. Can we get to the third? Our defense is debuffed. This is going to be close. Unfortunately, we fall just short, and we're only able to get to the Twister. And unfortunately, the Gliscor was counting as they decide to let that go. We bring back an Empoleon. The opponent has Toxicroak as their final Pokemon. And this is very scary. This team has no counter resist. So anytime we see a counter user, we're typically in for a very long day. We are going for the Sand Tomb, hoping against hope they let it through. Unfortunately, they do shield it up, and they're going to be able to get off the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb is going to be taking us out, and now we're going to try and farm down with Empoleon. We are able to, but Gliscor has a move. They have a lot of energy. Is this enough for the Earthquake? And it is. Very close. Unfortunately, not quite able to get the job done. Picking up a terrible lead in the next match, Empoleon into Gastrodon. We save switch into Gabite, almost hoping that the opponent will swap out, but unfortunately the Gastrodon is staying in. At this point, I'm just going to try and spam as many twisters as possible. They don't do a lot of damage, but I do get to a lot of them. We tank the Body Slam, the opponent brings in Drapion, and here I make a pretty big misplay. I thought I could over farm by one, thinking I would outpace to the Crunch, but I forgot about Aqua Tail. So I lose out on all of that useful Flamethrower damage. So things are going from bad to worse. We can tank one Crunch, I'm gonna over farm by one, and then we're going for the Hydro Cannon to take them out. Fortunately, we were able to do some okay chip damage to the Gastrodon, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to farm it down with the Garchomp when they bring it back in. In comes the Gastrodon, we bring in Garchomp, and the opponent is not swapping out. And this gives me hope that whatever's in back is potentially weak to Garchomp. We commit the shield, and it's Bastiodon! We may actually have a chance to win this game. We are just going to start spamming out these Sand Tombs. Bastiodon correctly no shields the first Sand Tomb, but with that energy lead, we are able to get to a second. Second Sand Tomb does get the shield, and now with the defense being two stages debuffed, these Dragon Tails are really starting to add up. I have to shield the Garchomp, as Garchomp is definitely the win con. My Switch Clock is coming up. We bring back an Empoleon. My goal is to attempt to farm down to force them to empty their energy, which they do, since their Switch Clock is still not up yet. They land the Flamethrower, their Clock is finally up, and they bring back in Gastrodon. 
Mr. Dawn. Can we farm down? We're able to farm down and we leave with two sand tombs. The question is, is this going to be enough to take out the Bastiodon? First sand tomb gets the shield and we're able to get to the second sand tomb. So even despite the big misplay in the mid game, Garchomp able to clutch it out. And that is a good game. Picking up a terrible lead in the next match, Empoleon into Toxicroak. We save switch into Gabite, but unfortunately this is still not a great matchup for Gabite, as these counters do quite a bit of damage and I do need to shield the Mud Bomb. We are going to fire back with the Twister, hoping against hope for the shield, and we do get the shield, and then the opponent switches into Frostlass. Come on, get to the Flamethrower! No, we fall one short of the Flamethrower, and we're stuck throwing a Twister. But thankfully, the opponent does decide to double shield, which works out very well for me. This Frostlass is absolutely loaded on energy. I do want to try and preserve some health, so I am going to shield. By shielding the first, we guarantee we do shield the Shadow Ball. And then I'm going to throw the Hydro Cannon as soon as we get it, just so they're not able to hit me again. And now we're going to have to trust in Garchomp with no shields to close out the match, which is always a scary thought. In comes Garchomp, and the Toxicroak is not switching out. We are farming up, and we're able to get it quite low. Now the question is, are we going to be able to take out whatever's in the back? We're able to farm them down. What is in the back? And it's Magnezone. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely perfect. Garchomp going for the Sand Tomb does over half and the opponent resigns the match. The actual perfect Pokemon for us to see in the back. You love to see it. The leads are not getting any easier with another Cresselia. Again, Cresselia beats the whole team, so I definitely do need to stay in. We're able to sneak through a waterfall as they throw, which is very nice. I will take all of the extra energy I can get, because honestly, to beat a Cresselia with this team, I'm going to need it. The Cresselia actually commits the shield, which is pretty surprising to me, as they can safely tank a Hydro Cannon. So at this point, I'm more than willing to start committing shields myself, because these waterfalls are really starting to add up. You know what? May as well commit both shields in this matchup, and we should hopefully be able to reach two Hydro Cannons here. We're farming up, and we are at the back-to-back, -back, but the opponent makes a very nice catch. They are able to catch onto their own Empoleon, and now we're bringing in Gabite. We are farming up. Can we get to the Flamethrower? Yes, we're able to get to the Flamethrower. Again, Mudshot is very spammy, and we're actually able to take out the Empoleon. The Empoleon did not respect the Flamethrower, and they're not able to get to a move. Back in comes Cresselia. Can we get to the Twister? Unfortunately, we fall just short of being able to reach the Twister, and Moonblast will take us out. Now I'm actually going to bring in Garchomp and go for the farm down since I think they're still switch locked in. Unfortunately, they're able to reach the move. Please don't be the Moonblast. It's the Moonblast and they have Bastiodon in the back. So this is absolutely terrible. I thought for sure I could farm down, but we tank a Moonblast and now it's all up to Empoleon. We have lowered their defense. Is Empoleon going to be able to clutch out this match for us? Hydro Cannon gets the shield. Can we get to the second one? Yes, we can. Cresselia is still alive in the back. So can we leave? Live two Psycho Cuts here. Go for the Waterfall. Waterfall able to KO. And despite the huge misplay, we are able to get the win. Hopping to the final match and picking up a very nice lead, Empoleon into Trash Wormadam. Unfortunately, the opponent safe switches into their own Empoleon, and since I don't have a great response to Empoleon in the back, I do need to stay in at least for a while. We were able to sneak through a Waterfall, so we're one ahead of them, which is very nice, and now we're going for the Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon is not enough to KO. We're going to bank a Hydro Cannon and bring in Gabite. Gabite can tank a Hydro Cannon, but the goal here is to hopefully be able to reach a Flamethrower versus the Wormadam, as that would be doing some significant damage. They're going for the farm down, and we're able to get the Flamethrower. Does Wormadam know about Flamethrower? They do not! Flamethrower almost one-shots, and they bring in Gastrodon. Now, this is a little tough for us, but we still have Garchomp, and Garchomp will be able to apply a lot of damage with these Dragon Tails, and on top of that, we have Sand Tomb, so we're going to be able to lower their defense as well, so these future Dragon Tails are going to be doing even more. The opponent starting to feel the pressure. They're forced to shield the Sand Tomb, but we are going to be able to get them lower and lower. Body Slam does get us pretty low as well, but we're able to reach another Sand Tomb, and this will be doing some big damage if they decide not to shield. They shield. We bring in Empoleon. We're able to farm down the Wormadam, and we have the move loaded. We are going to be able to take out the Gastrodon and get the win. 
All in all, I really enjoyed running this team. Running Gebite and Garchomp together on a team in the Great League did prove to be very challenging, but the few wins that I was able to get felt absolutely fantastic. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible and we have finally released merch. I will have the design on the screen. If that's something you're interested in, I'd highly recommend checking it out. A link to the merch store will be in the description and all proceeds do help support the channel. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.